Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions from Plant Talk Radio. If you have a gardening question you'd like our host Fred Howard to answer, send him an email. The email address is fred at planttalkradio.com. Now for today's question. And Fred, uh, it has been quite a week. Yes. Uh, we've had the heat. Yes. We've had the rain. Yes. Uh, we've had the wind. <laughs> yes. We've had just about everything. Uh, I heard a little bit of hail on the house last night. Well, no, I didn't catch that part. I was either sound asleep or it didn't happen in my area. <laughs> but uh, we've had a little bit of everything. Yes. And and this is good in a way. Uh, it can create its own problems. And I want to go back to that matter of mentioning disease. Uh, one of the first things to speak to about disease is there are very many Plants are like people. They're susceptible to different things, different plants, different species are susceptible to different diseases. So it's just a matter of you being on the lookout. Um, if you find that there is, as I mentioned, mildew starting on certain plants, number one, uh, you can, st- well, it depends on your plant and circumstance. You probably could still spray uh, with a fungicide depending on which fungicide, which disease, and so on. So you're off to the garden center with a sample. But it's um, one of those things you have to prevent. There are there are curatives for disease, but they're, they're kind of uh, suspect, at least by me. So you have to prevent. And, and let's just say that uh, my, my phlox is an old-fashioned type. It is susceptible to mildew and apparently something else because I don't, didn't see signs of mildew. Anyhow, it's a matter of putting a spray on that is a fungicide that is going to be there when the spores in the air on one of these high humidity, high temperature days, when they land on that plant, let's just say it's seven in the evening and the plant is moist. The humidity is high all night long. Some disease spores can open in that short, relatively short period of time, 10 hours, and the plant has a disease, unless you have prevented it with a proper fungicide. Now, I don't want to worry everybody about uh, all the things that can happen, <laughs> they, they in fact can happen. But at the same time, know that if you have on your roses or on your lilac or the flocks, if you have a, a disease that is reoccurring, and especially this year where I think is going to be a fairly high incidence, just by best guess, uh, to put a preventive coating on is a righteous thing to do. Now, none of those coatings are absolutely uh, foolproof. But at the same time, if you can cut down on mildew by, by 95%, you have a little gray on the leaf as it turns out, the leaves still function properly. It all goes on well. Uh, if you expect perfection, <laughs> well, that isn't going to happen. None, none of the insecticide, well, I got to be careful here because of the people that are listening and, and, uh, have studied these things. But most of the insecticides will do what they are supposed to do. Uh, yet there's always an insect that has changed its genetic code a little bit that gets by it. And that's why the people keep that's why pathologists keep checking and new pathologists are brought on so they can keep ahead of these things. Uh, it just, it's one of those things where uh, in, in gardening and, and a thought that I had last week was, uh, as I was talking to a fellow, I said, you know, just kind of chill out. Now, I don't want to make you relax too much and not do things, but I said, uh, know that as you become a gardener and a more seasoned gardener, you're going to kill a few things. <laughs> yeah. he, there you go. He looked at me in the strangest way. But it's just one of those things where don't be defeated by the loss of a plant or a kind of plant. Switch. Just get something different. Or as you, well, as as my property has progressed from burning brilliant sun, a one tree on the whole property, to much shade, Well, too almost too much shade in some things. I've had to change around. You just have to keep working with your yard and garden that way as a matter of, um, well, let's just say the facts as they present themselves. Each year is different. Each day is different. uh, So on and so forth. And when I have lost part of my favorite honey locust for its light, beautiful shade, shape of tree and all that good stuff, it has exposed some of my hosta to the burning, brilliant sun. 
Now, we'll see how much that burning, brilliant sun burns. I know that if it was something that happened in August and all of a sudden those hosta got literally too hot and dry and so on, they would probably fry right, well, fry. They would probably be injured right into the ground level. Whereas I think now this year, with them coming into growth in the full sun, I think they will oh, shall we say, harden themselves to some of the facts and the faith that they have. If not, I'll have to move them. It's just about that simple because the garden is always the master. You just have to read the the blueprint on what the master is telling you. Hey, thanks again for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our other podcasts as well, the Plant of the Week podcast and the Plant Talk Radio podcast, all on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to sponsor a daily podcast, contact us at fred at planttalkradio.com. To find out more about Fred Hauer and Plant Talk Radio, visit our website, planttalkradio.com. Circle270media.com.